You know, I was, as I was, I've been sick in bed for the last, um, since Friday. And I've been listening to my mixtapes, and I'm like, man, these are good. It'd be so nice just to be able to, like, set up some shit in my house and, like, play records and have them bitches just run through here. I guess I could buy the fucking song on iTunes. But it's not as, it's just, like, I was listening to some of my, my, my Ohio players. I was like, man, I just need to be playing this shit, man. They don't know. This is an Ohio players, by the way. Like, I already own the album. I gotta go rebuy this shit just to play for y'all. I'm about to buy this shit, right? Yeah, so I, so I laid in bed for uh, five, what is it, three days? It was like I was in bed so much that I, I just lost days. I didn't, even, I didn't even know what day it was. And then found my, and I, was list, I listened to shit on fucking YouTube. On YouTube Red, best $15 I spent. That way you can like open other apps while the shit is playing. Not bad. Some shit's happened in South Africa. Fucking atrocious, by the way. Like I was, It was like three in the morning, and I put that shit on like they're fucking just they're murdering the fuck out of the farmers out of there like in like the most savage way that i had to stop the tape and put on comedy i was like fuck dude this that's fucking gnarly this is what this is what came out i was like oh man i need i need to have this i need to just be playing y'all shit i need to just yeah yeah what we play is great what we play is great i love it but like your life is just better if I just play you fucking old R&B jams every now and again. You just need that shit. I want to say Crumbling Herb sample in this shit. Yep, Crumbling Herb. He called it off Outkast's first album, Southern Playlist to Cadillac Music. That's a must-have. Hold up, people want to talk to us. You can deal with that. You deal with them fucking. Let's go to Ben in Cincinnati. Will you hit him for me? Ben, what up, man? Hey, what up, dude? How you doing? Good. You had a job interview? Yeah, I had a job interview today. And one of the questions they asked me towards the end of it was, what's the what's the last book that you read? And I couldn't think of shit, because I don't read books that often. I'm in college, and I'm busy as fuck. So it was like Hummingbird by Jude Angelini. He's like, oh, tell me about it. So huh. I was like, how the fuck do I frame this book without sounding like a psychopath? It's literally about sex, drugs, and hookers. So I was like, it's a very insightful book about a man with hard come-ups, and uh, it's about his trials and tribulations to get to where he's at as one of the most successful hosts on Sirius XM. And the guy, get this, the guy said he listens to Sirius XM every day and that he's going to check it out in, a, in the next week or so. Wait till he finds out all this shit that's in it. I'm fucking dying. Oh, buddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just I, I'm, I got to do this speech, in for like the Detroit booksellers, to get these fucking the literati to sell my fucking book with, which they're not doing. So like, I got to come up with like a smart way f- to fucking frame my shit. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like exactly it's about do. it's about dealing with depression and addiction. In the hard scrabble come up of the flyover states, in the what happens in the Rust Belt once jobs leave. Like what the fuck? I don't know what to fucking say. Well, I appreciate you taking my call, Judy. What was the job for? Bag of dicks. So it was for uh, Gannett. It was the USA Today. I'm in Cincinnati, so I was applying for the Cincinnati Enquirer. Hopefully, it goes through. I I I did pretty good. You know, just gotta be confident. Yeah. Go in there with confidence. Put your nuts on the table. That's right. At least you had a fucking answer for what the last book you read, and like you oh, could. Oh, dude, it was on the spot. You didn't even read the book either. No, I read the book. Oh, you oh, did. I read Hummingbird. Oh, so it was oh, the yeah, last book you read. Okay. It, it was. It was either that or Hyena. Like I, I haven't picked up a book in a minute besides those two. All right. Yeah. I mean, well, thank you for getting the book, and it's gonna get you that job. I promise you that. God damn! You're not gonna lose a job off of that because you, you made us. You, you made us sound smart. The book actually is yeah. deep. The book is actually deeper than just what the fuck you said. But like, yeah, you you made us sound good, bro. You good? Oh no, it totally is. And yo, I love your book. When I had my, by the way, when I had my DUI over the summer, you were like playing up hummingbird and shit. Uh, so I was like, I never even read Hyena, so uh, I couldn't drive. I walked four miles to Kentucky to get Hyena. Damn. I, and, uh, yeah. Great fucking book, dude. Thanks, I, I bro. And I thank you enough. You yeah. know they got Amazon Perfect. and shit, right? You could just order it to your crib. It'll show up. Yeah, but like when you got a DUI and you can't really do shit, and it's you got to get out the crib. You're literally just yeah. yeah. So I was like, what? What's my adventure for today? And then you were playing up Hummingbird, so I was like, oh, I'm gonna go cop hyena. My man. That's a dedicated. I always I, I love. The, I want the listeners to do well. I just want to see you do good. 
So hopefully he got that fucking job. Boop. Yeah, it's still going. Hey, Jam. Ohio players is a, like, very underrated group. Heavily sampled. Nene said Corrupt also sampled this song. Yeah, on site. I think their most famous sample... I'm going to go ahead and say their most famous sample. Let's see if I can find it. See if I got it. Of course I don't have it. Not here. Why Why the fuck? Why would I have it on my fucking computer? I need to do a goddamn radio show from here. I'm going to, hey, I'm going to find it for you. And then you're going to be like, oh, for real? They did that shit? They did that shit, son? 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 Let me, hold, give me, give me a second. I'm going to find it for you. I'm going to find it for you. Let's get away from the South African murder. So that shit just popped right up. Oh, my fucking shit. All right, hold on a second. <laughs> fucking Jesus Christ, dude. All right, here it is. Here it is. Let me. Sampled heavily by N.W.A. Dre. But one of the most famous songs out of, uh, oh, I don't got that. I don't, I don't have that either. Why would I? Hold on one second. One of the most famous songs out of Michigan that really put Michigan on the map was uh, used in Ain't No Future in Your Front, which also gave help gave birth to the fucking uh, G-Funk sound that was so popular in California. Fucking, this was, you, you, Michigan blew up when this shit dropped. Oh, buddy. Where is it? Oh, here it is. There it is for you. Right here. To the beach up. You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. And now, here's, here's the, the breakdown, breakdown with Justin Hunt. What up, Justin? Jude, how you been, man? Sick as fuck. Man, this is a great time to step in the studio, I guess. Yeah, man. I probably don't got nothing. <laughs> I missed last week. I was in San Francisco. Is this when you were sick? You were sick I was, all last yeah, week. Yeah, man. I was. I, I was. I was in bed so much that you just lose days. Like you just wake up. You like. I don't even know what day it is. I, I didn't. Yeah, I was in bed for four days straight. That is the worst, man. Well, there's a lot of good stuff on Netflix. Did you watch some Netflix? No, nah, I don't even fuck with Netflix. I was on YouTube Red, just fucking streaming. Like, uh, I like listening to like uh, professors give give um talks and shit like that so like up. i can learn some things yeah yeah yeah. i do that too man so it's, it's fun to fall into them holes sometimes the little ted talk holes yeah that's how i study for the uh, oxford shakespeare debate a raka. you know what i mean a raka, raka, raka. speaking of shakespeare fabulous and emily b who's emily b that's emily, his baby mom that's his baby mom they've been together for about 10 years I'm not sure what this has to do with Shakespeare, but nevertheless, transition. Uh, they've been together about 10 years. Because it's tragic. <laughs> it is tragic. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Um, this weekend, Fabulous was charged uh, for allegedly hitting, punching Emily B. in the face seven times. God damn. Knocking out two of her teeth. Wow. Now the Allegedly. Allegedly. Now, uh, the incident is reportedly related to a March 7th dispute between the couple that involves text message evidence. Allegedly, Fab discovered that his girlfriend, Emily B., was in Los Angeles at the same time he was, unbeknownst to him. Oh, brother. He allegedly sent threatening text messages before arriving home. Because that's grind. Like, why why are you out and why are you in L.A.? What are you doing? That's all kinds of suspect, Drew. It's, all kinds of. It's, that, she, it's not like she was surprising him. It wasn't some pop up. Hey, baby, I'm guessing, decided. To- look, I'm not justifying punching your girl seven times in the mouth, but I think there must have been some other dick involved. Uh, that's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds. Look, I have no reason to think of that being a problem. If not, like, why wouldn't she just say, "Hey, you know, I decided to come to L.A. as well." Why was it a secret? Why would it be something that he got to find out on his own? Yo, you already know, like, look, man, if you going through your girl's phone or if you guys, if you start going through each other's phones, the trust is gone. Like, the trust is already fucking gone. Um, I'm guessing Fab being a rapper, not to make a sweeping generalization, but like I, I rappers, musicians, people who travel, uh, pilots probably, I'm guessing, like, I'm guessing they're getting pussy on the side. So I don't think whatever Emily B was doing 
Fab was probably doing it too. I'm just guessing. It's tough, man. You know, I when you're in entertainment, I feel like if you married if you're married to someone in entertainment in any situation, you kind of have to have an open relationship. I, right? I agree with you on that one, or or else you're not being realistic. You're I, not. I don't know, and I there might be like one or two non cheating ass motherfuckers out there, but like the the non cheating entertainers are the minority, and they're probably older. And they bring their wives with them. Exactly. They've already lived that life. They've got that pussy. They've hit that club. Right. Now they now they just want to fucking settle down. But I don't know I don't I don't know like a lot of ball players that are turning down like turning down chicks. Like my famous line is like if you get with like a ball player or a musician that's successful, you can count on getting a Mercedes and herpes. Like that <laughs> That's probably what you're gonna get. I feel like it's got to be the same, especially for actors. Like, these people literally have relationships for uh, a living, like, on camera. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. A lot of people, they do all the on-set shit, and you're working very closely with somebody. Feelings get involved, and there's some cheating going on. And, yeah. you know, there's scientific proof that being faithful is not in our nature. Like, you are, we're literally going against our nature in order to stay in a relationship and not cheat right exactly and you know it's you know actors they're they're basically the kids in like drama club in school right and i remember what they said about the band camp there was all kinds of hunching going on at band camp oh yeah same thing was happening with the drama club yeah the nerds be getting it in don't think don't think the nerdy motherfuckers aren't getting their dick sucked because they are they're and they're doing weird shit too, because they're smart. Like smart people do weird shit in bed, like smacking bellies all over the stage. Yes, yeah. More on the Fab Emily B situation. All right, let's hear about this shit now. According to affidavit of probable probable cause, while on a flight back from Los Angeles, uh, that's when Fab found out that she wasn't. How weird. do you, How do you find out? Uh, he found out through text messages. Hit, she texted him, or he, he checked her text? Emily B. told police that Fabulous said via text he wanted to hit her in the head with a baseball bat. It doesn't really go into the details of whether or not he went through her phone or someone else okay. hit it up. But maybe he saw it on the gram. Maybe he got tagged on something. You never Ugh. know. Social media will kill everything. Man, now, what a way to fucking find out. Can you imagine you just scrolling through your fucking timeline, you see your girl in the like in, like the like in the club somewhere? Like, what the fuck is she doing there? That's what I'm saying, man. It's the worst thing. Like, I couldn't imagine being in high school right now. Yeah, dog. I'm. So, I don't look. I don't condone um, punching people. Any anybody punching anybody in the fucking face. But cheating does seem like cheating does seem like something. Uh, when, no, when nobody's saying shit, when Angela Bassett burnt all of my man's shit on the fucking lawn and ruined his fucking car and, like, yeah, chicks, but, will fuck, chicks will fuck your fucking best friend. I'm not sure. Like, if, they'll, I, they'll kill your heart. I'm you not know sure, what I mean? I'm not sure Fab's a victim in this, though. Like, I feel like Fab has probably been doing his, oh, fa- yo, Fab been doing his thing. You know, and that, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's probably it's very hypocritical for right. him to get upset. Like, how could you? Especially go this You're the far. mother of my child. <laughs> What are you doing with another dick in you as you as you've been fucking slaying groupies for the last I'm hypothetically speaking here. Look, it's always the people who are cheating who are most upset when they get cheated on. Like yeah. when they get to this level of violence and anger, you know, there's there's a, a, a That's eight years of ass whooping too. That's, like that's that's right. like a lot of baggage. A lot um, of it. That's that that's fucked up man, that's fucked up, man. Like now, all knocking of, your girl's teeth out, man. Jesus fucking yeah, Christ, that's dude. That's he also sent threatening text messages uh. to uh, Emily B that were talking about uh, beating up her father and her brother. Said that he had uh, <laughs> quote a bullet with their name or had bullets for them. Quote unquote. What is this guy doing? Why is he put? He's putting this shit in text. I don't understand this, man. He's fucking dumb as shit, dude. F a b o l o. What are you doing, Fab? There's a video of an altercation that happened with Emily B. All right. And her father. Now, this is after, allegedly, this takes Did, place after. After her teeth got knocked out? After he got punched. So, here's, this is them outside the house. All right, let's see. Fuck you, I'm 
That dad don't want none, because that dad don't want none. He's, he's about eight feet away yelling. How are you gonna? How are you gonna just stand there behind another man, not doing shit, yelling he's a coward? I mean, this go is, handle him. You drove over there. This is all around ugly. In the in the video, allegedly Fab is holding something sharp, looks like a knife in his hand. Okay, all right, I get it. You don't want to get stabbed. But I don't know. I mean, this is. Uh, but, I get it. You don't want to get cut up. Look, I don't can look. Don't punch your girl in the face eight times. At all? How about yeah? Let's. Maybe not at all. I'm surprised she was counting. Like, how does like you get punched a couple of times, you start losing count. Like I that's I'm the last thing I'm doing is like one, two, three, fuck, four, five, again, six, seven, eight. You're like, you know, fuck, that was the two piece. Like God. Oh, he's making light of it. Whatever, dude. Maybe she's all good until the teeth the teeth got knocked out. I mean, that is maybe she lost rough, maybe, dude. Maybe it was wrong. Maybe it was more than seven. She just stopped after minus the, two teeth, bro. That's I understand. Terrible. I understand that you. I understand. I understand. I understand being cheated on and wanting to do something violent. Like I don't. Th- I think. And and if you don't, then you're not. Then you're not being realistic with yourself, and you're not really. We we are human beings. We're delicate creatures. When we get hurt, we we often respond with violence, even if it even if it's not like physical violence. Uh, uh, you know, someone will take half of your shit, which or, or take the child from you, or break stuff, tear or, up pictures. Yeah, re- we we respond in kind for doing fucked up shit to one another. But fuck, dude, man, Jesus Christ, man, knocking a motherfucker's teeth out. Now, Emily B. was on Love and Hip Hop New York at one point. Uh, I don't watch the show. I read that Fab was actually caught cheating on her on that show a few years ago. Definitely there's a pattern there. Oh, man. <laughs> Yo, he couldn't, he couldn't keep his dick in his pants with cameras on? Come on. I think that, one, never, I don't feel like there's ever a reason to hit, hit a woman ever. I do. Like. That's I right, do. You do. I you do. Think, I think, think there's. I, I think there's reasons to hit people. Okay. I, yeah. I, I definitely don't condone. I don't advocate anybody doing that. I also don't advocate threatening people what over if, text. All right. What if your girl fucking took your kids away from you, burnt down your motherfucking house, fucked your fucking homeboy, and socked you in the face? I get my my cousins to jump it. Yeah. There you go. See, there you, all of them. We can all find a reason to hit a motherfucker. I won't be hitting them. I can't make a bad situation worse. That's what happens with these things. You hey, you're right. Like this it's hard to come back from that. Right. But yo, I was talking what was I telling you about this like th- there's certain cultures like I was fucking with this like hood Mexican chick and she thought I was a bitch for not hitting her. Yeah, see. Like there's like th- that's the other thing. There's there's certain like cultural shit like where like violence is just is the norm in the fucking house and like if you don't do it then you are like she thought I was lying for just being like, why are you doing this? Like, Don't take the bait, Jude. Don't she thought, take the bait. I didn't. I, we didn't. We ended up not talking. Then she ended up fucking with this uh, another hood Mexican dude that would beat the shit out of her. And then they stuck together for fucking years and they had four kids. You I know wonder what how I mean? she feels about it now. They're it's not the, together anymore. But Surprisingly. You know, I think, look, you can't be putting stuff in text. You definitely can't be catch yourself on video threatening people i understand you're in the heat of the moment but this stuff doesn't go away and one thing i think is really interesting is now we've had a lot of situations we've talked about around this topic we've had xxx tentacion we talked about the him allegedly kidnapping this girl the crazy story around that we've talked about uh kodak black he had charges for assaulting a woman at one point we talked about i know that but like to lump all of that shit in the same fucking thing like i think it's different when you are responding to being betrayed by a lover as opposed to like just some fucking I, I think I'm look violence is violence but there's different reasons for violence is that can we can we agree on that uh, I, theoretically perhaps not in this situation are we saying that fab is innocent are you is fab no, a victim no, here no, in, no 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 fab is being fab is being ridiculous yes 
being very That's ridiculous. a cheat motherfucker that got <laughs> cheated back on go. and didn't know how to fucking deal with it. Okay. That, that's <laughs> that ain't right at all. All I'm saying is if I'm not cheating and like I found out my girl fucked a gang of dudes or had like a busto ran on her, I don't know what the fuck I would do. I'm not saying I would fucking hit her, but like I can understand if someone said if someone if that happened and someone punched their fucking girl in the head after after like she let everybody run a train on her and maybe he like just bought her something for her birthday like i'll be honest in that situation i would be like huh all right you know that shit happens if i'm in that situation i know the last thing i need to do is hit this chick now she's the last one to even be hidden right like she's already in your analogy i don't need to trust them dudes i gotta trust her to not fucking suck nine dicks that's all i feel like in that situation that girl wasn't mine anyway that girl already wasn't mine. Now I definitely don't need to go to jail for a girl who ain't mine. I look, I agree with you, and because if she's willing to do all that scandalous stuff, she definitely sending me to jail. Yo, and and look, this is this is coming from. I remember this is coming from. I don't I don't hit women. You know what I mean? Like I don't I don't I don't do none of that shit. Like I'm pretty fucking nonviolent. I grew up in a violent household. I had to see that shit firsthand. It was traumatic, and I don't I don't do it. What I'm saying is I'm I also don't live in this utopia. Where where I ex- I expect people to behave in ways that aren't human. That's that's all I'm saying. I definitely think I agree with you on the sen- on the fact that like you know there is a reason to no if someone a, a woman assaults my mom or something or you know if they uh, 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 kill my child in a car wreck knock on wood type of thing you know I can understand that yes. I- Definitely can't understand it. Fab, though. come on, like, come on, Fab. <laughs> you know what I you mean? You a cheating motherfucker, bro. And send this stuff in text. Allegedly. And he's dumb. <sighs> and what yo, know, whatever whatever's gonna happen to him happens to him and he's and he and he probably deserves it. I and I wonder what's gonna I mean, he's got charges against him. We'll see how that plays out. But a lot of these guys, especially these young kids, they don't seem to have any repercussions anymore for like this type of stuff. Like at some point, you know, People act like they want to stop listening to your songs, or maybe they stop buying your records. But nobody seems to actually we, lose fans over this. Kind I of mean, thing. yeah, like we've already fucking set precedents where it's like we don't expect if you, as long as you write a good hook, you we will forgive you of anything. You can pretty much, motherfuckers, you know, motherfuckers had cats getting pissing on 15 year olds in the fucking face and ignition is still was people still can know all the words to ignition such a great song hot and fresh out the kitchen you know what i mean like classic i i I agree with you but it just shows you that like people are fucking we you know we forgive we will forgive a lot as long as you can write a good hook dog R R kelly's the one i haven't been able to get past like, I can't get past R. Kelly. Pac, I forgive Pac real fast. I was like, ah, he probably didn't do it. I don't think Pac did that I shit. I don't think Pac did it either. But that's how I feel about Pac. And I'm sure a lot of people might feel like that about whoever else. Maybe people feel like that about Fab. When I hear about famous people getting in trouble with women, I tend to don't, I tend to, I tend to, I want to see proof before I start fucking f- f- blaming a motherfucker. You know how long it took me for to, for the Bill Cosby shit, it was like forty women, and I was like, I don't know. And then, and then they interviewed him, and I said, that motherfucker did it. <laughs> like I had to literally see, I, li- I had to literally see the interview, and I was like, oh shit, like oh goddamn. After seeing Fab act like that, do you think he? Yeah, that looks like that type of behavior, right? Yeah, and I, he was wrong. I still don't think Bill Cosby did it. I still don't. You ain't see that interview. I heard somewhere he was trying to buy NBC. Seems like something they would do to somebody who's trying to buy NBC. Just because it's a conspiracy, don't miss a theory. Look, that and, yo, he also was like, he also was very critical of the black community. I could also see uh, people within the black community wanting to see him go down because he was critical of like, yo, right, stop having fucking kids out of wedlock. Very critical about that shit. I don't know if anybody had the power. The people who were critical about that, the person I don't think that, they had the power to the say person that, that The person that blew him up was the fucking the black comedian. Yeah, but that doesn't mean he had the power to get these women and come up here and, you know, all Yeah, but he was the one that exposed him. him. Like, well, that was like an open secret. 
I think people knew. Look, people were doing pills back in the day. I was like, look, I do, I do, um, I do certain drugs. I won't even like. Girls will be like, oh, let me try some. And I'm like, we have to fuck first. <laughs> Straight up, dog. Like you ain't from the Cosby me. Like we gotta. F- I gotta set dick precedent. Like I gotta set some dick precedent before you even try any of my shit. See, those are the type of things that make me think that okay, there's a gray area when it comes to that Cosby case versus R. Kelly. We saw that on video. We literally watched R. Kelly. I can't get the you picture. ain't see. You didn't. You didn't go watch. Go watch Cosby's first interview when they asked that motherfucker. And then, then tell me that you don't think he did it. That's all I want you to do. You don't got to do it this week or next. Look, you, I'm, I'm looking in your eyes of a man that doesn't want to see the. You don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want to see that shit because you'll know. A different world changed my life, man. Yo, Cosby Show was my shit. It's a great television. Fucking Fat Albert, like, yo, he did so much good shit in this world. He's a hell of a comedian. I used to love it. Dad is great. He gives <laughs> us chocolate cake. Like, I grew up on this motherfucker. I'm just saying, and he did a ton of great shit for fucking for the culture. But yo, if I had to bet money, if I had to bet a paycheck, one way or another, that's a drugging motherfucker right there, man. Oh man. <laughs> watch, watch, go watch that fuck. Go watch it. Go, go, go watch it. That's all I'm saying. I'll take a look at it. I probably skipped over it because I wasn't ready to think about Bill Cosby under this light yet. Yeah, but like, let, let's get back to Fab. He's, he's, he's. <sighs> it hurts when someone cheats on you, doesn't it, Fab? Maybe you shouldn't have been cheating on your fucking girl all this time. And who knows who cheated first? But, like, you might as well just have a fucking open relationship by then. I wonder if he's going to... He did a show this weekend. Uh, I believe it was in New York. The crowd was packed. He was sell- thanking everybody for their support. I wonder what's going to happen. I mean, you know, again, he's been uh, accused of crime, so he's got to go through the system. But, like, I wonder, if, you know, if people are going to stop listening to Fab. You know, will people no. take a break? Is there any he'll, repercussions? He'll stop, he'll stop getting play. And I think, and I think it's... And, and these young cats... These young cats that are beating up women and doing real violent shit to women, I think that that it's it's fucked up. They shouldn't be doing that shit. Like it's, I don't stand by it. But the crazy thing is, I come from a neighborhood where like it was equal opportunity. Like it wasn't like if you fucking you get smacked in the face and you better not do that. Like if a chick hits you, like I've seen dudes beat the fucking brakes off of women. I don't know if it was like hood shit or what, but like I've seen, I've seen men beat the fucking shit out of women because they got hit by the fucking chick. I've seen it too. It's, it was just the culture. I was, the culture I was raised around. That was, it was like equal opportunity. Like I think a lot of it, a lot of, you know, I didn't grow up. I grew up in like upper middle class background. Right. And, I saw a lot of that same type of stuff, but it was like more you you know, polite. Me. It was behind closed doors. Like you could see, you saw the bruises more than you saw Damn. someone like you know what I'm saying catch a black eye. Yo, my like dog, my homeboy came over with a fucking black eye. His girl fucking hit him in the fucking face with a remote. I'm like, damn, dude, you like a battered wife, bro. And he he was, he was having excuses like, oh, it was like a one in a million shot. I'm like, okay, man, like you a battered wife, like. It, th- and that's the other. That's the other really common misconception that this is a very one sided thing. It's fucking women hit too. Like, but if we were saying if uh, if what percentage me, would you say? Like, I've, I've I, never I, seen I, anything I, around this. I looked it up. It's like uh, I can't. I can't quote the. I can't quote the. It's close to fifty percent. Like, it's close to fifty. It's really, really it, yeah. It's really crazy that the yeah. Like the fucking women to men hitting is like it's close. Men do more damage. But like women hit too, like how many, I know how women many times? Hit, but I can't how many see. times? How many fucking women do you know that have fucking fired on their goddamn man? Like and seriously, I don't have, I don't know that many. Seriously, like really, I, like not like that, like that. Like I've seen them, not not as many as I've seen when it comes to you know men at the same time. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that, I'm not saying I haven't seen anybody yell or, or big fights or nothing. But in terms of like throwing blows like that, I've dude, seen, I knew I've, man, seen oh, like I've seen chicks fucking beat. Fuck their man up, dude. Like I've seen that shit a gang of times. 
I, I, I knew this one chick. She used to beat the brakes off. Once she beat the shit out of my man for she gave him some money to buy a this was we was in high school, so she gives she gives him some money and he was a broke motherfucker. She gave him money to go buy a suit from like JW or some shit at the mall. And that motherfucker ended up buying an ounce with it. So she comes over like, What's up, man? Where's the suit? And he's smoking it, you know? So she uh More than forty percent of domestic violence victims are male. More than forty percent. So I said close wow, to fifty. Close to fifty. That's, that's what I'm saying. But that's an underreported. That's an underreported statistic. And because there's not men advocacy groups that are pushing that that narrative, and they women do less damage. I wonder All how right, they so, find that out. Just like from calling the police or something. Yeah. That, so anyway, so she fucking she beat the shit out of that motherfucker. That's crazy. We're laughing our asses off. She goes to hop in her car. To drive away falls down, so we, we laugh. We laugh at her. Not, not she's mad, so she gets out the car, beats the shit out of him some more. And then, like two months later, like after this of her beating his ass all the fucking time, he finally hit her ass back. Guess who goes to jail? When you were dating the chick that was mad at you, or who thought you were soft because you wouldn't put hands on her, Did, was she beating you? Was she punching you? She never, she never put hands on me, and I never put hands on her, and we were fucking good. I, not yeah. Yeah. Like, look, man, like, I grew up, like, around, I grew up watching my mom get fucked up by my old man. That shit fucks you up, like, so you don't want to do that. Either you either you duplicate that or you fucking. You're a good man, Judith. Uh, as, as, as me. Um, I'm shocked that you don't want to pronounce my name correctly. But um, I just wanted to say that when you said that when you hear about famous guys, who are being accused of rape, you think that the female is always lying? You, you said essentially that you don't believe. I need to see hard evidence is what I'm saying. I Just accusations don't do it, do, don't do it for me. That's I, well, Which means that you just assume women are lying. I, never, I don't never, assume all women are lying, but to, to me a lot of times, just to me these guys have more to lose and the the woman has more to gain, so therefore it makes me, it makes me question it. I mean, does that logic that, does that logic make sense? You know, Did you understand it, that no, logic? It makes sense in it makes sense in the same way that you know all male privilege makes sense. Oh, um, male! Oh, just, dropping the privilege on me! Wow, you, you're so well, woke. I mean, that's what it is. It's, that's, you're woke no, as fuck. That's what it is. You're okay. Male okay, privilege because I don't agree with you. you. Can patronize me again because. You just think that it's bullshit, but I think you are bullshit. Okay, okay. But go ahead, uh, go ahead with your bullshit argument. Um, my bullshit argument. You're, you can't you're, even you can't even come with facts without dropping privilege on me. I'm, I'm. I told you. I told you sound reasoning. Now you may. Okay. Now you your, you can dispute that reasoning. Is sound in your in your own mind. It is not sound reasoning because, of course, any accusation I, that that goes without saying. I, I I assume that there's evidence, otherwise there wouldn't be. You know, it, it would. The Duke college good. players, the Duke lacrosse players. Okay, you can use you can use. I'm just throwing out. I'm just throwing all, out all examples. Time. Okay, but this is why women don't. This is why women don't report rapes. This is why. Rape is not prosecuted as, as, you know, heavily and aggressively. It's because guys like you are just, you know, want to say that all women are liars. I'm not saying all women are liars. I said in that in that situation, I would need to see hard the majority, evidence. The majority. The majority. No, I didn't say that. Most women are liars. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say most women are liars. I said when I hear about famous, when I hear about famous cases and there's not really fucking hard evidence... I would like to see the hard evidence. Okay, now you're now you're now you're having there's a caveat without evidence. I agree. Okay, if there isn't any evidence, then I she might be lying. But you said without even hearing any of the facts, you just assume that she's lying until you see evidence. And what evidence does there need to be? What if it's just her word what if it's just her word against his? I would need to see evidence. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It depends on it. it I can't make us. I can't. It, it. Each each example is different. Each each thing is different. That's all I'm saying. Like, look, man, I'm not saying women are fucking liars. I'm just saying, like, a ball player has a lot to fucking lose. And I agree. And I really appreciate your honesty and you taking my call. 
Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and Esme, I'm glad that you and I were able to have like a fucking have discourse <laughs> in a civil way without yeah. me like being told kind of a dick halfway through. But to be fair, I, you did no, say you, male you privilege, know. which I yeah, it I'm just sorry, triggers that's me. A, that's a trigger. It's a trigger. <laughs> Um, I really like the show. Thanks for thanks for taking my call. And you're you're Thank welcome. You. And hopefully you hopefully you understand that I'm not for raping fucking women. I'm not I'm not like all about fucking like not believing women. I I I come from a fucking household where women have been violently violently uh handled. So when these things, when these accusations come along, I want to make sure that it is real because I take it that serious. That's all I'm saying. That's it. I'm with it. And, you know, you did, you, you've been consistent on that point, too. You always said, I need to see facts first. That was like the first thing you said. Uh, I think the thing that I do agree with is that whether she's lying or he's denying, if there isn't evidence someone's life is still either going to be ruined or already ruined. It's over for these, yo, maybe they'll, maybe they'll get back. Like who the fuck knows? Um, but in this, and, and someone else, someone else said, how do you even know that she was uh cheating? And you're right. We don't know. We're making an assumption here. We are making an assumption. Um, I, I think it's more like a hypothesis. Yeah. I'm guessing. I'm get like I'm get like what what like, what are out just... of town trips for? You know like well, who's what do you take a secret out of town trip for? Why don't you tell the, the man in your life, the person you live with, that you're in the same city as them? Let's go to uh, let's let's go to Gavin in Washington. Hey, what's up, Jude? Um, I agree exactly what you were saying about there needing to be proof. I mean. I was in college not too long ago, and I saw this happen a lot where, you know, uh, women could be just claiming things just because they were embarrassed or anything like that. So I, I agree with you about that. There's Yeah, there's chicks that'll fuck a dude. They'll blow him off. They regret it. And then all of a sudden there's a fucking, you know, sexual assault happen. Or they get, they get finessed out the pussy. Like, that's not the same as a motherfucker raping you, dude. Sorry. I've got finessed no, out man. of dick. Like, I've got talked into a fucking broad that I did not want to fuck and felt like shit afterwards. I didn't get raped. <laughs> I just got finessed. Like, and, it, and the problem is, is we're, 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 we have, we're creating this culture where, where they're putting all of, this, all of these different categories into the same thing, and it's just dangerous. And they're, they're, and they're not... They're, it's just a dangerous place to go. That's all I'm saying. Do you think it's more dangerous than where we've been? I don't know, man. Like, I don't know where we, like, look, man, I, I think, you know, 50, 50 years ago, like smacking your girl around and forcing sex on her, or even in certain cultures, you you go and you go to certain cultures in the, in the, you know, east of here, like. You fucking throwing acid on a fucking chick's face, or or forcibly, you know, f forcibly raping them, or fucking, you know, a, a chick getting raped, and then her father being mad at her for dishonoring the fucking family. That that is happening right now, and I think th these are things that need to be addressed. I, you know, hey, but what the fuck do I know? I'm just I'm some fucking fifth year senior high school guy, recent Iowa. Judas, I like your show, first of all. And and the thing I wanted to say is basically on Fabulous, that's bitch nigga shit that he don't did. I mean, you go put your hands on a woman like that, even if you cheating or she was cheating and stuff, he should have just went, left well enough alone and just went about his business. With all that money and all that fame to make himself look that bad, you know, that's just bitch shit. Walk away from him. But why put your hands on these females and stuff? And Look, you know, I, just just leave. I'm kind of look, I'm in agreement with you about the whole fab shit. Like, yo, dude, this is like fab. Like, yeah, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Especially if you're cheating, especially if you're cheating first. She's just responding yeah. in kind. I, and who the fuck knows what their situation is? Maybe she cheated. He cheated. She cheated. She he, like there's and we don't even know if she cheated. I'm I don't even know if he cheated. I'm just guessing. 
I'm yeah. making a sweeping generalization about fucking about musicians. There was a Love and Hip Hop New York episode where they said Fab cheated. All right, then well, they, let's, so we got one half of it. Let's go to uh, Rashid in San Antonio. Jew. What up, though? Hey, what's going on, brother? Hey, look, the reason the father and the son was at the house, she called him over to remove some guns in the house. And that's what kicked him off about, yeah, I got a bullet for both of you some bitches. Uh. They were, yeah, they were there before he arrived there and removing the guns. And when he got there, that's when he went bananas. I think that was a good idea for her to make that call. Of course, I do too. I totally agree. If he's knocking her fucking teeth out, it was just a matter of time for he put a bullet in her ass. I mean, but like, how how do you how do you get your teeth punched out and then you're 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 hanging out with them after? Hey, this shit been going on. You know what I mean? This ain't the first rodeo for neither one of them. And she's a stylist also, so maybe she was in L.A. styling the client. I think all this happened All Star Weekend. I'm not really sure, but I just been listening to this shit for for weeks on XM. So. Yeah, all right, so all this is all right. So she's a stat. Like, why would you need to hide a job? Well, I mean, maybe he's so fucking out there that he she couldn't even get in touch with him. He might. Or, I'm in L.A. I don't know. Or he might be. He might be super controlling. We don't know. We don't know the whole story. Exactly. We don't know. We don't know the whole story. Um, That's exactly right. Let's go to Sharon in Virginia. Sharon, go ahead. Hey, hey, this is Sharon. I just want to tell you that um, I think you're wrong. Okay. I think that the athlete does not have a lot to lose. Most professional athletes, most high school athletes, they, there are so many cases where they're not tried, they're not they're not even charged with these rapes. So it's like a male fantasy that all these athletes are you know going to lose all their money and all this because most of the time nothing happens. Look, and I don't I don't, don't have the statistics one way or another to fucking argue that point, but. Well, you were arguing the other way. You didn't have those statistics either. I did <laughs> have statistics. How much athletes, I, I, how much athletes lose? How much do they lose? I, that was your argument. Yeah, they can they can lose they can lose their career and a lot of money. Uh, so, what's your stats behind that? You were talking about you know just now that you can't answer because of stats. So, what's your stats? That that athletes lose money. No. In, Okay. That athletes lose money and they and it hurts their career when they're convicted of rape. And what look, what I'm saying is that really happened. That so when the lady was talking about privilege, I don't know why she couldn't articulate what that is. What it means is that they're 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 a lot of things are moved away from them. You know, they they have all kinds of studies about how even in high school, athletes are protected from a lot and, and I would imagine musicians too are protected from a lot of the things that you and I would, would, would suffer for. You know, when there's money, there's a lot of things that you can get away with. They got a name for it. Um, that may be true. I, that, that may be true. I, I'm, I'm, and I'm not familiar with that. I, I, I'll grant you that. I don't, I don't, I don't know that. And I can, I can see athletes being protected. Um, okay. I can also see, I can also see the other way, uh, which I think you're, that you're not seeing that, there's there are also times where you know sometimes people have something to gain to by accusing somebody of something yeah i i do i i know that that's an argument but you know being a woman there's not a whole lot of women who make it to that uh pot of gold <laughs> you know you you'd be surprised how many people you would be surprised how many women get paid off under the table just to shut them up and get them the fuck gone and, and i mean and you know dudes i mean you talk about seeing you know uh, girls beat up guys all the time but you know dudes too how many guys do you honestly know did, did, except no for no i'm sure you know some who did not just like i know brothers who did not <laughs> you know that they, they even talk about it you know for whatever reason you know, she was asking for it. She was a tramp. She was a thought. She was this. You know, but we know that there are guys out here that don't take no for no. I I so, agree. Like, Look, I'm not saying I'm not saying there's not rapists out there. I'm just saying when there's when rich guys get accused of it, I'm just fucking. I just need to see. I I'm just a bit more skeptical. That's all I'm saying. And maybe maybe that's not fair, but I'm just saying. Uh, for for instance, uh, Zeke Zeke Elliott lost between six hundred thousand dollars and could lose up to seven million f- from being accused of domestic violence last year. That's just from an accusation. So, so there there's a number for you. That's a lot of money. Well, I mean, you sit up there and 
sit with your producer's hand, you little slip of paper. I'm just sitting in the car talking to you, but uh, uh, I well, yeah, it's, you you wanted no you wanted accusation. numbers, so I gave you some. Right, right, right. No, but I'm saying it's no accusation. It's ever just an accusation where people lose money unless you know advertisers maybe may get a little scared and they they pull out. But by and large, you have to come up with overwhelming evidence to get a rape. Conviction. You would be I mean, overwhelmed. You like you you need to have a porno that, video. I, that, you know, it I, don't get a lot of these. I don't. I don't. I don't look. I I don't. I'm not an expert in that. But I also do know there's like a lot a lot of college guys get accused of these things and are expelled with without any without real due process. See, see, it's that's it's not true. this see, no that's that true. is true. It's it's handled within the school. It's instead of instead of actually with with law enforcement. No, that's not true. Look it up. No, you look it up. One of the things that came out with that Duke thing, the reason it got so much traction was because they found that colleges covered up. Rape. I mean, and I'm talking about plausible rape accusations. They covered them up. There were studies, there were investigations, and so said, no, these colleges were not taking rape, rape accusations. Even the ones that were that were really good cases. That woman you know, was lying. Well, you know, that's I know that that, that woman was straight up lying. She, she was lying. Now, you know what? You know what? And they caught her with, in in the lie. That's well, you know, that's what they said, but all I know is in the beginning, there was a whole lot of evidence against those Duke players. And that, that money came into play, and all those witnesses got, they disappeared. The evidence disappeared. Okay. So, all right. Like okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. I hear you. Okay. Um, all right. No, I hear you, but I think the more you talk, the more you're making my, you're, the more you're proving my point. How? Because you sound <laughs> like a conspiracy theorist the same way. I'm not- a lot of money came into play. Like, come on. All right. Like, go look it up, dude. Like, some of the guys weren't even in the fucking house when it happened. They had alibis. Do you think situations like that are the norm? or the I don't norm? know. That, that's that's what I don't know, and of. therefore I like to see fucking evidence. That's all I'm saying. Well, I think that we all have reflexes, I'm, and I'm not saying that you're saying anything different, but, you know, there is a reflex for people to see things through their own lens, right? I don't know if the Duke lacrosse thing is the norm or not. Or I don't otherwise. know either, but I, I've, I've I been in situations where, like, I've been in situations, and I've seen situations where I've seen fucking, like, I've seen women do some really grimy shit, dude. I've seen it first fucking hand. Yeah, man, I agree. There's, a couple of times. Yo, yo. I'm from the South. I can think of a lot of non-sports examples that fall right up into the, the grimy situation. I'll let that hang for a few. But Christopher know. in Patterson, New Jersey. How you doing, sir? Go ahead, bro. Yeah, I worked for the sheriff's department in Patterson for 11 years. I, I worked all my life as hard as I can. All through it, my fiance used to whoop my ass. I never laid a hand on her. Finally, I had enough. Mushed her up off of me. She calls the cops. I go through a three-month court experience. Lost my job, lost my career, everything. Didn't even get a pension behind it. Now, don't you feel it was wrong that she can beat me, hit me, smash my car windows, and I mush her up off me and lose my career? I, that's kind 100%. of, that, that was kind of my whole fucking point behind this like that was my fucking point like you can lose a lot just on accusations and then be proved innocent and it's not a very big headline when you're proved innocent exactly um i'm gonna take a couple more because i feel like this is a under fucking reported thing uh jay in oakland dude i i you just solved something for me man like i was dating this chick and it just seemed like something was wrong with her. Like, she would get real aggressive, like she wanted me to hit her. And I'm like, what the hell? And then when you said, with the chick you was dating, used to date, you know, I can't articulate myself the way you do, so I'm going to watch what I say. But at the same time, it was just really, really weird that it was almost like I was a punk because I didn't hit her. And then one of the things my mother told me after I broke up with her was you got to watch out because some women don't feel like you love them unless you do. I'm not saying all, but some women won't feel like you love them unless you do hit them. So I just felt like when you were saying that, I was like, oh, man, he just saw something for me because it was really weird. It was almost like I was soft. 
because I wouldn't put my hands on her. And I, I just didn't get that. But now hearing you, I see that I'm not in a boat by myself because watching my moms go through some things, I cringe at even thinking about doing it. You know what I mean? Like, just to see it, yeah, it makes my you, bones hurt. Because you saw the pain of it. Like, you grew up with the pain. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and, like, I grew up in the same... This is, like, this is some... I grew up in a household with fucking violence towards women. Like, I don't agree with, like... I'm not saying I agree with that shit. I'm just saying that there's two sides of everything... Many people have different motives. There's there's a gang of fucking raping ass fucking dudes out there. I'm not, I'm not defending them. But I I do I I for such a serious allegation, it is nice to see some fucking evidence before I before I make up my mind one way or another. That seems fair to me. I, but that's not what that's that's not what's popular. By it's gotten to the point by denying, by not co-signing and not questioning, then you are an advocate for fucking you. You saw what you 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 saw the phone calls I got. I do think that you know. I do think that there are situations that are just difficult to admit. Right, you. My man just called and said that he was getting beat up by his woman for years and never called the police. He had that option, but he didn't do it. So when he finally got to his last straw, he mushed her off. Now he's got to deal with the consequences. Obviously, society's going to be against him. Courts are going to be against him. Judges are going to be against him. And juries are going to be against him. He could have called the cops. But he didn't do that for whatever reason. Right? And I think a lot of women don't do it, don't necessarily call the police for whatever reason as well. You're right. You know what I mean? And so I feel like if there's an environment where people feel like they can't express the abuse that they're going through, then all we're doing is compounding problems at that point. Because you're right. The last thing I want right now, the last thing anybody wants right now is for anybody to go out and say, hey, you know, you assaulted some woman, hashtag me too, hashtag. Yo, like, was, that's the last thing that anybody wants because, one, I don't know if any of these guys have gotten arrested. And, two, all of them, everybody treats all of them as if they're guilty before there's a trial on any of these. I was, I had a chick at the crib. She and I started debating, and she was like, I feel threatened. So I just sat, I sat there and got abused by her for an hour and then waited for her to calm the fuck down and walked her out in a nice fucking way because I understood I understood. What could fucking happen to me? All it took was I. I feel th- I feel th- I th- sat on my hands and she just she she dogged the shit out of me for an hour and a half and it was <laughs> and it was fucking exhausting and I was like, okay, okay, okay. You should have to live like that, dude. Okay. You're in your own home. It's me and her. It's her word against mine. I'm not going to put myself in that situation. I put it on live stream right now. Everybody, this lady here. Says she feels threatened. We're going to broadcast this as I escort her out of the building. That's why people sign NDAs. Atlanta, Atlanta, Alex. Yo, what's up, big dog? Go ahead, man. Uh, yeah, man. I just kind of wanted to weigh you on, on your shit, man. I, like, I fuck with you, Jude. But, bro, listen, they got a lot of... I, I'm glad you mentioned that shit about different cultures, right? Because guess what? They got a lot of different cultures doing a whole bunch of different shits, right? They got them dudes up, up in India. They be they be they be gangs of them running out there raping their females, disrespecting the, the girls, the females. And guess what? The the, the 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 whole industry over here in America too is fucked up same way. Because look, guess what? All the music is about disrespecting the females. Everything is about disrespecting the same thing that helps mankind function. You dig? So that that was my whole. No, you're right. That was my you're, whole, you're, you're right. It's, it's, thing, it's weird. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. actively we actively play very misogynistic. Like, yeah, like, so, like some like, of our most just, like some of my favorite like, songs are like about pimping women, like, super misogynistic, especially especially in especially within uh, hip hop. Like, I don't. Yeah, the whole culture is just like you know. It's, but it's being supported by both men and women. Is the craziness. Carlos in North Carolina. Hey, what's going on, Jude? Go ahead, bro. 
Uh, I'm calling because, uh, man, for one, I was a, like you, I was the same way. I was a victim of uh, domestic violence. My girl used to beat my ass. But she, she was basically trying to get me to uh, hit her like the, like the last caller, the caller she called back there. She would call me all types of names, bitches and everything, trying to get me to hit her. And I wouldn't hit her because, like, like you, I grew up in the same environment at home, you know, and I wouldn't hit women. She would do everything she could to make me hit her. I wouldn't hit her. So, like, years later, she confessed to me is because she always, she was, she was from Brooklyn, and she was raised thinking that if your man didn't hit you, he ain't love you. So that, that, was, that was her, you know, thing, trying to, trying to see if I loved her. And because I didn't hit her, she always thought I didn't love her. But also, that woman who was going in on you, like the one who said you was wrong, you got to explain to her, she doesn't understand the culture of athletes and rappers. Like, they have groupies waiting on them. How would they take pussy? You feel what I'm saying? Like, th- these women are waiting to give them pussy. Why would they take it? So and then they get up there to these rooms and, oh, he raped me. You you were selected out of hundreds of girls in the lobby. You feel what I'm saying? So it, that's why you, like I, like, I agree with you that you have to have proof. If I don't have proof that it took place, like strong evidence, I'm going to feel like you, you were, you know, trying to take advantage of this rapper or athlete because they have women throwing themselves at them. You know, and that's one of the things that, that that woman who you spoke with needs to understand. And she sounded like she was older, so she probably doesn't understand the groupie culture. I mean, the groupie culture's been going on for a long time. Look, here's the deal. Um, I just, I just wanted, pe- I just wanted the other side of the story to be said a little fucking bit because right now I feel like the narrative is overwhelmingly anti-fucking man. That being, and let's jump back. Fabulous is wrong for punching his fucking girl eight times in the fucking head. Pray Santa. That's it. That's all. I, it's 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 you know, yeah. I mean, I definitely dude, this Fab situation is its own thing, and we are in a place where accusations are sticking, even if there hasn't been any convictions, and. I definitely, I don't know which one is worse, right? Is it worse to be the person getting abused who isn't saying anything but getting abused? Or the person who's getting accused of abusing someone who, and they didn't actually do it? I don't know. I honestly don't. But I do know that for a very long time, this is how I feel, for a very long time people have been in positions where they haven't felt safe to say these things out loud, whether it's, for whatever reason, for a number of different reasons. And now when people are actually doing this, actively doing this, the resistance is the same thing as we've heard before. You know, we can't trust them. We, They're probably lying. Oh, well, he's rich, so he, it shouldn't matter. I mean, oh, well, you she's, she's paid. You no, don't trust Bill Cosby's shit, and there's 50 fucking women. Well, I mean, he, he made a different world, man. It was my favorite show growing up. <laughs> I just love that show. All right, we're gonna end with uh, we're gonna end with Sherry uh, just to get uh, another side of the story. Go ahead, Sherry. Yes, I have a friend whose husband is in the military, and he's beat on her for a number of years. And every time I told her to report it, she said that she couldn't because he would lose his job, and then they would lose their home. They wouldn't have any money, so she just continues to put up with it. So there you go. So look, look, man, it's. Uh, Humans are violent, and they do fucked up shit to one another. And be kind. I don't. I don't know what else to say. Like, there you go. So, like, look, it's it happens that way too. Like, she she does she she is financially bound to this man, so she gets so this woman gets beat and won't say anything. It's fucked up. I, look, you can't. And I'm sure that happens. I'm sure that happens a lot. You, you, it's hard to improve on a situation or for a situation to improve if you're not willing to improve yourself, if you're not willing to take a risk. I'm not sure which is worse, getting beat up or being broke. But sounds like sometimes people make their own choices. There was yeah. a number of guys who called up and said, my woman beat me up for years. Yeah, we didn't, didn't get to, we didn't get, we didn't get to, there was a, we had a whole, we didn't even get to those calls. There was a gang, there was a list of those calls. That's what I mean, man. Like, leave, son. Call the police. It's illegal for everybody. 
man. It's crazy. It's like when you love, like, look, man, people love one another and they get something out of a situation or else they wouldn't be there. Like, I, like my buddy that gets fucking abused. Like, I watch my homeboy get domestically abused all the fucking time and he's still there. It's like, I'm like, well, you, you must be getting something from this situation as he's got a fucking black eye. Like, we went out to dinner and he's got a fucking black eye. He looks like he got beat up by someone. Yeah. And he did. His fucking girl. And I'm like, you're a bitch. Get a new girl, man. Just be... It- Try something else. I guess sometimes you just like getting punched in the face. Man, we got uh we got beef between Takachi. What's his name? Takachi. <laughs> Takashi six nine visited the Breakfast Club. We're gonna, uh, we're, oh. we're gonna come back with that. Let's play. Let's play a couple songs. Perfect. You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. We're back. More fucking hip. This is all. This is the all hip hop day on Shade Forty Five. That never fucking happens. We got Justin Hunt, the company man, in with us. Takashi sixty nine. He was the little fella that got in the scrap with the with your other rap buddies at at the at LAX. At LAX, Aquelio. Big shout out to Aquelio. So it was, yes. uh, five on four, and he was way in the back. It was two on five, and oh. he was way in the back. Oh, yeah, excuse me, two on five, two and that guy five. was way in the back. Yeah, and those two chased all five of them back into the airport. It was embarrassing. It was so, very embarrassing. So what happened on The Breakfast Club? So this was the biggest interview of the year for The Breakfast Club. Takashi 69 visited Charlemagne, Angela Yee, uh, Envy, and... Put on an hour-long troll job, essentially. Uh, he talked about all this recent confrontations uh, during South by Southwest, for example. Uh, he was uh, pressed or, you know, perceived to be pressed by Cats Out of Houston for showing disrespect to Jay Prince Jr. Uh, this was during the World Star show, showcase during South by Southwest. Takashi was supposed to headline that show. He did not perform. He still came to the venue. He did not perform because all of Jay Prince and all of their teams were on stage the entire time for the entire thing, so he didn't feel protected. He said it's a better to be, he's gangster, but he's not stupid. I agree with him on that point. In the interview, he also talked about the accusations that he has that he uh, assaulted an underage girl, put an underage girl in a sexual situation. Uh, he actually uh, admitted guilt in that case because oh. the girl was 13 and Jeez. he was 18. Now, they, she was just in a video in a sexual oh. situation. It wasn't, uh, you know, quote-unquote assault or uh, as as close to actual pedophilia as everyone right, right, right. Uh, was seems to suggest. Yeah, yeah. And the main thing that was so compelling about this interview is that here's a kid, who's a guy who's 21 years old, uh, and he really controlled the room visually when you watch this. He's uh, talking to, he's trolling Charlemagne. He's telling everybody in the world how gangster he is. He's talking about how no one is ready to test him. No one's come up to him in the street they, and, and, and tested the, the rainbow hair guy with the tattoos on his face and the rainbow teeth. He told Charlemagne that he hadn't, if it wasn't for the Breakfast Club show, he would have never heard of Charlemagne. Charlemagne, you know, recited his resume and talked about his books and everything. And Kim was like, I would never heard you heard of you if it wasn't for this show. Completely dismissive of everybody in that room. To the point where one of the things that was trending on Twitter last week about this conversation was how Takashi just super trolled the entire uh, interview. He trolled Charlemagne and out trolled Charlemagne in a number of ways was part of the discussion that came out. There's one point here. We have a clip from the interview we're going to play. Now, one of the things that uh, Takashi 69 has been accused of is that he used to be a crip, but now he's a blood. And he came out and he said, well, you know, uh, who was I blooded under? Who was, excuse me, who was I cripping under? Who was I cripping under? He was just... And they would ask him questions. He would just troll magnificently. And he has a conflict with a crew out of Brooklyn called Scum Gang. Scum Gang. Here's a clip of what happened when Scum Gang reached out to Charlemagne and how Takashi handled it in the conversation. He's that. Like, you know what I'm saying? So pull up on me. Like, I, I haven't met without one brave soul that came up to me and was like, yo, you fool. You a fake ass gangster. You a rapist. You a this, that, and the third. Nobody got the balls to come up to me and do that, bro. Like nobody got. You know what I'm saying? It's all the internet and it's all this and no, all no, that. No, no. By the way, but the, the, the niggas did call. Him? They did call my phone one night, and I said I don't care. And I actually gave them academics number. I said I'm too old for this shit. Call academics. Nah, numbers. nah. Academics said you called on? him personally. Academics is a lying ass nigga. Academics gonna get you hurt. Like your homies 
They, they stop saying that to me. I don't they know them print, niggas. Like, blood, I don't you know, know them, them at niggas. all. I wouldn't know them if they walked in the studio. You know them niggas. No, like, I don't. If I was if I was actually down with his homies, nah, I wouldn't be able. But I was never down with nobody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now let me ask you. I could walk, look, I could walk around with a lime green flag and be like, oh, I'm Pate. I'm I'm not Pate. I could walk around with a um land king flag and I'd be like, but isn't that faking though? Isn't that false flagging? Yeah, but I was never jacking it, blood. Like, I was never like, yo, I'm G-Stone, ah, ah. Like, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Half of the people that was in, 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 in these, um, videos that came from L.A., none of them niggas was blood. And it was in the, um, who's the nigga that came at me? Um, who? who? Game? Nah, the other dude. The, Black 100? The, 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 the dude that was hot mad long ago that came out, um, YG. YG came at you too? So he throws shots at YG there, he go throws shots at game, and the conversation was just a master, in my opinion, top shelf troll job from someone who really doesn't have an idea of potentially some of the repercussions that could come out of this. Like he called out YG there. YG, you know, they went back and forth on uh, Instagram after that. And Takashi was clowning, mocking YG while he's swimming in a, a swimming pool. Uh, these are situations where we've already seen Takashi get into a fight in Los Angeles. Uh, we, we, we saw people try to press him in South by Southwest. Uh, there's people who were saying that the people around uh, Takashi in New York, there's some people who are upset with him there. And he goes to different towns. It doesn't necessarily show respect. Uh, this is now this video, this interview did four million views within the first two days. It's at eight million views right now. Uh, it's got two spoof interviews that came on uh, since then. Gary Owen, the comedian, spoofed the whole thing. The next episode on uh, the Breakfast Club, and now we have a situation where this kid is really blowing up off trolling. One of the things we talk about all the time. Yeah. Ah. Uh, I. I got nothing to say. Like he, like what? Like I don't know if he's a blood or crip. I don't know nothing about him. All I, all I know is the two videos that you showed me. Well, here's one thing. I talked to Charlemagne after the conversation, after he okay. had this conversation, and I wanted to know, like, you know, I, I personally felt like he was on the defensive. Uh, Charlemagne was on the, the, the defensive. I, I felt okay. like he was most of the conversation. I felt like he was qualifying himself quite a bit to uh, Takashi to a 21 year old. This is his forum. And the, and the and the funny thing is, is uh, what I. I don't watch Breakfast Club because I don't want to copy off of them, and like just out of respect, like I respect the Breakfast Club, so I don't, I don't get to see them a bunch. But when I do see, and like shout out to Angela Yee, every, everybody over there. But when I do see them, I, I like what Charlemagne does. Like, he's, he's good at fucking. He's good at uh confrontational interviews in a non confrontational way. He's brilliant at it. And he's uh, got reps. He's been doing this for twenty years or so. So so one of the things I asked him that's how our conversation started. And, you know, I asked him, I was like, you know, I kind of feel like Charlemagne kinda came up trolling. Like I feel like there's a level of trolling that comes with, you know, his style of interviews. Yeah. Um I asked him that question. We have his answer here. So oh, here. Here. the audio from the conversation. So when I when I see these kids Say things like, yo, Charlemagne, that's how you got on. I'm like, no, it's not. Like, it's really not. Like, anytime you ever heard me express an opinion about an artist, I really felt that way. Anytime you've seen an artist come to the Breakfast Club and I tell them that I don't like their album or I tell them that oh, they freestyle me and I tell them I didn't like it, it's because I really don't like it. But guess what? I celebrate people just as much as I so-called hate on people. That's why I hate the fact that, you know, we live in this era where if you like something, you dick riding. If you don't like something, you hating. Like, there's no gray area. Like, I don't troll people. I've never trolled people. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't do things to get reactions out of people. Like, that's not how I move, you know? So it's like, it bugs me out when I see even, like, people say things like, the, uh, the, uh, the, the interview was a battle of two trolls. Like, bro, I'm not trolling. Like, I'm not trolling this young man. When I tell him if he doesn't change his ways, something bad going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like I, it's interesting to me, right? Because I don't know if if there's uh these one thing that happened in that, this interview with Takashi over and over and over again is he kept emphasizing his right to free speech. He's like, oh, on the internet, I can say whatever I want. I can say whatever I want on the internet. At what point is there a point when it goes too far? I don't think there's ever a point when free speech goes too far. Like I think I'm for I'm for all forms of free speech. I think that's 
the most important thing. That's the way you change things. That's the way things change. Um, that being said, yeah, free, like if you don't like something, you fucking speak against it. Or we have open dialogue. Like I'm all for that. Um, especially doing the radio show. Like I don't want to feel confined. Um, you got free speech, but he's doing it on private platforms. So like Twitter's private. Uh, Instagram's private if he talks out of his neck too much and they don't want him on there they will take him off of there or like you, you, you like you have free speech but like these are private these are private fucking companies like you don't have free speech on private companies right and they right exactly and I, I think when where Charlamagne was coming from in the conversation was he was trying to tell this kid he's going to get hurt Right. What the he, fuck does he care? What does he care if he gets hurt? I, you know, from our conversation, I think he's he feels a way about what happened with Tax Stone and uh, uh, Troy what? F. Remember Tax Stone and Troy F. And the gun where they were at the club. Oh Troy yeah, Troy yeah. F. was shooting up the yeah, club. Yeah. Tax Stone shot Troy F. Is, uh, or is accused of killing his friend Banger. And no, that's that is another situation that played out on air and through the media. So I think that's where he was coming from. Uh, <clears throat> with uh, you know his approach to the conversation, like suddenly you Look, know man, playing, if, playing, if, yo, playing. If, uh, if something bad up. happens to that dude, I don't give a fuck. Like he's been talking, he's been talking to gang of shit. That's how he got on. Like you know, you, you plant seeds, some might come out of that shit. You you know you reap what you fucking sow. Like and. Every time I've seen him, I don't know much about him, but every time you've shown something to me or somebody has shown something to me, he's been talking a gang of shit. So if he ends up getting fucked up for it, oh, well. Like, oh, fucking well. He's made money off of it. So that's the thing. I, I think that trolling is it's way past it's way past a gimmick now. Like, to a degree, it feels like it's becoming a oh, necessity. A yeah. I mean, almost a necessity, right? Like when you have, every, you have all these people who just say all this wild stuff, whether it's true or otherwise, you know, all over social media just to go viral. How does a flyer stand out in a paper storm? Like, how do you find ways to cut through the noise if everybody from your homie to the president is trolling on Twitter. Yeah, I mean, like that's that that's and then not just not to mention that we celebrate it by this is the second time I've seen you where we have celebrated trolling. The last time we fucking uh, g- gave 20 minutes to fucking people shit talking Tupac, rappers I've never even fucking heard of. So like we celebrate it. We talk about it. Um, it's a fascinating. It's fascinating to to me to the degree and the breadth of where it's got. Like, look, and yo, he's got a point. Like, yo, he, he hasn't gotten touched yet. So he did. He got touched at the airport by two guys who weren't even a part of any of this stuff, and he didn't look that good. Like, that's the thing that's so crazy to me. But that like, was the fluke. That was the funny thing is that wasn't even him shit talking. That was his boys trying to holler at their girls. And fucking a fight ensuing, and he was way in the fucking back. And I guess you can shit talk if you're if you if you're fucking ten deep all the goddamn time, and you got buffers. Like if you stay deep, keep like he's good. Just don't be out there. Don't get caught out there solo. That's the stuff that makes me wonder why he's so confident. You heard him talk about how gangsta he is. Why is he so confident? We saw him fight. He didn't look that great in the fight. At the same time, no, he it, did not look good in the. He did not look good. <laughs> did in not the look fight good at all. He did not look good at all. You know. And then on the flip side, they're up here disrespecting women. That's how the conversation started. This is a guy who's who pleaded guilty to something close to being a pedophile. He's got right. women charges on his record. At what point is this a pattern? You know, like his whole team be on the gram calling out everybody in L.A going crazy on everybody in Houston. But nobody why in is, L.A. did why shit. So Ain't nobody in L.A. do nothing. Except for the guys from Houston. <laughs> and that was Except on a fluke. Yeah. So crazy. And that was on a fluke. But, we, so but we, don't know how mu- we don't know how much out there Takashi was. He might have went to the show, came back, and just hold up. Well, I don't know if he was out at the club. I don't know if he was out. I don't know if he was out walking around to get touched. I don't know. All I know is nothing happened. And the only thing that did happen was a fluke fight with two dudes from fucking Houston. 
I, I tend to think most of these things are smoke and mirrors, right? When we were talking about game versus Meek Mill and that was going back and forth, we talked about that on the show. I felt like most of that was smoke and mirrors. Yeah, yeah I think there was really a rap beef in there somewhere. But when they were talking about going to Philly and he's taking pictures up Yo, there where you get cheesesteaks, I'm like, let's That's be not real. Really Philly. A lot, a lot, and a lot of these fucking beefs are fucking 3,000 miles away. It's pretty. It's. This isn't cross town beefing. Like, this is. You're a, you know, you got to hop on a plane and have a connecting flight to go fucking fuck somebody up. It's easy to talk shit back and forth to one another. And it's kind of good for everybody, right? Like, there's, I know more names of people who are around more rappers based off of whatever type of social media beef that they're in. You know, I, you know, I wondered if Charlemagne, like Charlemagne was trying to impress upon this kid, it can get serious. <laughs> and I was I don't like, know. I, I, I don't, don't even, I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's really going to get that serious. I mean, we'll, let's no, let's we'll go to the phone case. lines. Uh, Lester in L.A. Lester. Hello. Go ahead, yes, bro. Yo, yo, hey, you know what? Honestly, I, Justin, I don't know why, but uh, 6 9 look, if he was really real, he would have been on that fight as the first person fighting, and then his fellow friends would have followed him. That guy's not real, man. That guy's coming up because us, we right now, are speaking about him. We spoke about him before. That guy, that's that's how they do it now these days. They either do something stupid, something that is not normal, and luckily, luckily they get you know enough views or whatever they have to do to get up in this uh in this rapping game nowadays. I mean, if, like you said, Jude, these guys are three thousand miles away from each other. If if they would have been in the same city, same same whatever, that guy would have been smoked already a long time ago. And if he was out here in L.A., he never came out to the streets of L.A. because he's not really a real person. And if he's just trying to be somebody, he's trying to be away from the real, real thuggish shit out in the streets, man. And all these new artists that don't know about the real Pog, Biggie, and all that, they're just wannabes, man, honestly. Colorful hair, all that, it's all fake, man. You don't see real, real, real people with all that fake stuff around. It's not true, man. I mean, that guy is a fake person. I, I don't, I don't like that guy, man. You know, there's a lot of, I think a lot a lot of new of guys that are not good yeah. at all. I think a lot of people so, don't like him. But the, the irony is, his music isn't. You that know, bad. I mean, his music. Look, when I heard his music, yeah, okay, I heard it, boom, boom. But once things started popping up that he's talking shit, this, 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 and people, that guy just wants to be famous like that. When is he gonna bring out a track that's gonna be popping on the charts? That's, you know, and everybody he likes four it. tracks and on the charts. Everybody charge. likes it. She has four you tracks know? on the Just charts. Just like Migos and these other artists. He's I don't good. like Migos and none of them, but those guys have music. He's got four you know, tracks on the charts. It, it, He's got it, four tracks it, on the charts. He's got four tracks. Mike in Colorado. Yo, Joe, this is Frank. Oh, go ahead, Frank. Hey, man, this is ridiculous, bro. I mean, I got to put it like this, like the first call I just said. You know, a lot of these young cats out here, 21, he's first of all, he's 21. And he don't really know nothing about these fucking streets, bro. Because if he did, he would not be acting the way he's acting. And to be for real, bro, it just shows you the same way as your man Safari. Got his ass stuck up by them goons, put a gun to his fucking head, and then he goes on live TV and fucking crying. Bro, these streets are serious out here. These dudes are really thugging, bro, because it's hard out here in these streets. And you sitting up here going to these other states, talking about you doing this and you doing that. If you want to die early, bro, just go ahead and commit suicide. Bro, but the real rappers that we hear, like Tupac and, and Biggie, bro, those are real G's, bro. None of them really live this way, bro. And if he goes to jail after 25 years of life, he'll be watching somebody throw with that fucking hair, bro. Come on, bro. I don't even know why y'all fucking sitting here and even talking about this young cat, bro. He ain't nobody. Nobody. Tommy Guns. Tommy Guns. Yo. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, what's up, man? Guns from Bakersfield, California. My man, go ahead. Yeah, check this out, man. I've been trying to get at this week to Kashi Six Nine for the last, I say, year year or so. I DM'd him and DM'd him. If people don't DM me back, I've been trying to catch a fade. I ain't no clout chaser. I ain't trying to get rich or famous. I got money. I fuck with corrupt and all them out here on the West Coast, so it ain't it ain't nothing about that. Just that I don't like what he's doing. He's portraying to be something that he's not. 
So and you, when you do that, that's that's something you just don't do. So you've been trying to that get at you been hurt. you been trying to get at them see, to what, fight them. Yeah, see, I am. I I I got videos on YouTube. You know, sending them to him, they flag my videos. You know, they 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 flagging everything I do. I sending them DM. Who's, Personally, who, like, what's up, dude? What's the channel? Let's talk this out. Maybe right. I could set you up on the right track to make, to, you know, to boost your career instead of you <laughs> doing this bullshit and starting problems. He's in Bakersfield, all right. There's sirens. Um, all right, look. Yeah, uh, I'm, yeah. From, I'm from Cali. That we always have sirens out here. My man. All right, Edwin. Edwin in Texas. Go ahead. Hey, what's up, dude? I just want to comment, like, you know, I, I, everybody's, like, going after this kid, like, you know, and I follow up. This kid didn't start nothing with nobody. He's just addressing it. It's everybody's coming at him with a pl- platform. They're giving him the platform to come at, you know, the way he's coming out at people, you know what I'm trying to say? Because, like you said, you know, like in that Charlemagne uh, interview, he's like, yo, name one person that I came after. And it's true. He ain't starting nobody. He's just addressing everybody coming at him. Is that true? You know what I'm trying to say? And, and like he said, he's like, hey, well, you know, I'm a kid with rainbow hair that got everybody, uh, t- uh, you know, a little upset. Well, he's not a kid, one. He's you know? 21 years old. And two, I don't know what you call a, a disrespecting the dude's girl at the airport. Now, we could say it's not well, gang affiliated, know, I, I so we call that. it a, it's a, I'm it's talking an about like everybody like that's, that's calling out his name. Like, did he come at them first? No, they're coming at him. Everybody, like Casanova, everybody's coming at this kid. You know what I'm trying to say? He's just addressing it. What about YG? They're giving him him the platform. So now here comes this kid with rainbow hair. They're giving him a platform. He's running around acting like Tupac. He's acting cocky. You know what I'm saying? The the ones that are coming at him are giving him the platform to do it. You know what I'm saying? What happened to everybody getting together and making good music? You know what I'm saying? they, they, They don't exist no more. You know what I mean? This is what sells. This is what this is what people want to want to hear. Want want to see. They want to they want to see who's gonna get killed. Who's gonna bang bang this and shoot up this and and who's about it? You know what I'm trying to say? Half of these half of these people ain't about nothing. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't think anybody's going. Look, that that was a point that came up in the conversation. Was name somebody that they came out first in terms of these high profile situations. Fair enough. I don't know anybody else who's uh, of all the people that he that's surround in this kind of thing. These guys are Takashi and his team are bucking louder than anybody else's. Like Takashi's manager was on the ground being incredibly grimy, crazy grimy, talking about Jay Prince Jr. Said Jay Prince Jr. Suck my dick. Hey, I only respect Jay Prince Singer. What's up, Jay Prince Singer? Like. Just crazy stuff. His manager was on the gram doing that kind of stuff. We have already... they been to Houston yet, Sunset? No, they have not been. As right. I've, as I've, I haven't seen them in Houston. They might, you know, who right. knows? But they haven't been down there since uh, South by Southwest. Well, that's Austin too. So that's that's a road trip from Houston. Like it's two hours, but it's still, you know. So wait, Texas. So people showed up and then up. he wouldn't come out on stage. Is that basically? Yeah, Jay Prince Jr. The whole and all their affiliates rap a lot was on stage at the World Star Show. Through everybody else's set, Filthy Richard's set, Rallo set, everybody beforehand. Apparently, Takashi was getting tagged on IG, on the gram, on social media. People were saying everybody was here. Uh, Jay Prince Jr., they wanted to meet up with Takashi earlier. Uh, or they wanted to meet up with him, I think, at a birthday party or something like that. Nevertheless, Takashi felt like it was a setup. So he went to the event, told uh, World Star that, hey, you guys aren't securing my safety. I'm not going on stage. That makes sense to me. I, I don't know. I wouldn't walk into a trap. I I don't. Yeah, I hear you. But like, you do talk a gang of shit on people. They show up, and then you won't address them. I'm with it. I'm with it. Like, I'm you, sure he was deep. I I'm sure they were both deep. I definitely don't. I definitely think nobody wants to get World Star on World Star. <laughs> and World Star was ni- nice enough to protect him. So <laughs> right. Go. That's how it is. There you go. Well, I mean, like, look, that's like I I hear the logic behind that, but like, if you're about that shit, then you're about that shit, and you don't need World Star to fucking 
help you out, you you handle that shit right there, right? Isn't that how it goes? Like, I'm I'm not a fucking genius. Well, that's the thing about trolling. I keep coming back to we're seeing we're seeing it go so many different ranges now to the point where you can say whatever you want to say about someone online. Use all your freedom of speech to get everybody all amped, and when they show up to where you gonna be at, you, it's okay to be like, "Nah, I ain't going over there. I probably get beat up." Yeah, I know. It's kind of, it looks suspect. That's exactly where we are. Well, there you go. And that's what's, we're, we're, we, look, man, we have different, I, I got a different value system than a 21 year old kid. I'm 40. I don't talk shit on nobody, bro. Like, you believe it or not, if you, li- if you listen to me, I'm not, I'm not talking, I don't talk shit on anybody. Uh, when did you stop? You used to talk, you used to, you used to voice. I don't know. I guess you were always opinion. You had facts behind your opinions. Yeah, it was just like yeah, this or that. Opinion, I'm yeah. not into the fucking right. rapper, or either, but like I'm not like fuck that guy forever. Like I haven't said fuck Takashi. I like I'm just I, saying, if he gets fucked up, I'm, oh well. But I guess like, I was thinking about Jenny Jones. She's a justy broad, but that's what the show was. Yeah, the show yeah. was me talking the shit, was and I was actually shit. in their fucking face. Right. So there you go. Right. <laughs> I mean, I was there. They were there. We were there together. Um. Look. Yeah. I. I, I, I do find it a bit suspect, you know, you you talk a gang of shit, you show up in the motherfucker's place, and then you get someone else's security to help you out. That does, that, that does seem a bit fucking whack. It, it's, that, that's all I'm saying. I, I understand that your logic, but you're not thinking, that's not gangster logic. That's not G shit. It's just not. Like if, you talk shit on somebody, they show up to holler at you. Um, you would fucking handle it, right? Isn't that what fucking tough guys do? Like, I'm not, I'm not a fucking, you know, I'm not a genius here, but right, because these guys are trolling. That's what they're doing. They're trolling, right. and it's just like you know, that it's, shit. Uh, it's captivating, and it is is watching a, a train wreck and a car wreck. At the same time. Well. The kid's got good music, though. I do like his joints. He reminds me of M.O.P. Well, there you go. He was able to make M.O.P.'s music fucking crossover friendly by um, by uh, by trolling and, and dressing funny. If there's an upside. There you go. Is, is it like, is it derivative of M.O.P.? Or yeah, it's, it- it's just, yeah, it's like real angry, uh, raucous, loud. It's like M.O.P. gets a lot of Onyx comparisons as well. Okay. Yeah. Know, yeah. I'm, I'm not mad at his music. I, I like his music. I haven't heard I like it, so I can't, I can't comment one way or another. I was listening to Ohio Players to start the show. Oh, okay. Sweet, That's sweet almost, sticky thing. It's probably almost exactly opposite. Yeah. I fuck with M.O.P. though, and those are some real dudes. And those, those are real dudes. Those guys are, and I, and you don't question their realness because you've seen it, and they will fuck you up. They will fuck you up. M.O.P. will fuck you up. Like, they're for real. They, they, I think there was a video of them walking around just fucking up bootleggers. Or shit, people are bootlegging their shit. <laughs> Like those dudes are real. I gotta find that. Is that real? Yeah, that those really th- those guys are real. You, you know, back in the day, you don't. There's certain rappers you just didn't question their realness. Now, th- th- they're very loud, and you question their realness. That's that is where, like, when Trick Daddy was talking shit about Trick Trick, he got his arm broke. Like, that's their realness is self evident. You just don't see that as much anymore. And no one calls him out on it either. Oh, Charlemagne's trying to have a fucking intervention. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Come on. Come with us on a petition buying bus. This is them. Operation. And we about to make sure that everything is official up and down the ass. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Make sure ain't none of our shit up on the bootleg tables. We about to go. We about to clear house right now. We about to do a routine search. You ready come to me when you want bootleg? They got bats. So y'all got to do y'all thing the way y'all do it. Fuck that. Don't sell, okay? Don't sell. No M.O.P. Don't sell. M.O.P. I said one day. You said don't sell. I know it's a lot. You. Got a block. 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 
Yeah, they're running up on motherfuckers like. That's, that's Brooklyn, too. Yeah, because they hiding them shit. They both from Brooklyn. Them. Those are Brownsville. That's it. We might have one. We might have one. All right, there you go. You Hell, that's Watch real. Me. What you got over there? You have MOP? You sure? You don't got it? Nah, they running up on cats. You got it? You MOP? Yo, nothing? I'm looking for me, dog. That's all. Look, man, I just, you know, there's certain, there's certain, and a lot of the motherfuckers who's, who's like, are doing real shit aren't yelling it on the ground. Does this get worse from here, in your opinion? Yeah. Do you think, do you think people start? We are rewarding them. So, yes, it will, the, this behavior will continue and it will get louder. And uh, it'll be more motherfuckers yelling shit. If there was a tipping point in the East Coast, West Coast, rap beef back in the 90s, right? It felt like Biggie and Pac dying, those were tipping points, right? Because after that, hip-hop, everyone started loving each other. It was shiny suit era, and everybody was collaborating. But that did feel like a tipping point, right? To yeah. me, it did. Yeah, yeah. Right. And in that sense, to me, that's what really ended that. I felt like a lot of cats, and now as, as real as they were, and as how serious a lot of these things were, there was a lot of just team ups going on just because of what was happening East Coast West Coast. I know, right? but even the smaller rappers were just still getting murdered. Like you know, just I mean, shit. If you look at Detroit, dog, like those motherfuckers go at each other. Like you don't question their gangster, and they are not on Instagram yelling shit. But even from an online trolling standpoint, is there a possibility that there's a tipping point, in your opinion, to where it goes out of style? Is this just something that's just stay the game now? No, nah, man. Like, is wrestling out of style? Yeah. They lose money. You can look up the WWE's numbers. I know that. These are facts. Wrestling has been losing money for like 10 years. <laughs> and they've they, been losing money. Are they it's still real. profitable? Uh, it depends on what you call profitable. You know what I mean? Like, they... they they made a gang of money, you know it's what I mean? It's, they're not publicly traded, so I don't know if we know. That. Look, all right, so all right, yeah. so wrestling is going out of style, but it's is everyone's taking the wrestling model, and all of this shit is is the wrestling model, and it's being put into sports, fucking rap, fucking politics. It's it's fucking WWE, bro. Like this is this is Roddy Roddy Piper talking shit, bro. Like this is. This is The Rock. For his sake, I hope so, because Bobby Schmurter is definitely in jail. Tax Stone is in jail right now. Uh, Troy Ave has got a bracelet on. He's waiting to go to court, trying not to go to jail. Even with, even in the WWE, there are repercussions sometimes. All right, let's get it. That was uh, The Breakdown. Thanks, Justin. You are checking out The All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. J45 and Hip Hop Nation celebrate the release of Brooklyn, New York rap collective, rap collective, excuse me, Flatbush Zombies latest album, Vacation in Hell. Host Gray Rizzi. I always fuck up his name, Gray Rizzi, and that's my man. Gray Rizzi and Torre uh, combined forces once again to walk you through this new project with features like Joey Badass, Jada Kiss, Bun B, Denzel Curry. He's, he's one of the new rappers I really like, and more. Boom. Tune in Friday, April 6th, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific. That will be on Shade 45, Sirius XM. Boom, bitches. Miss any of the show? Listen on demand, Sirius.com forward slash on demand. One, uh, one more Jude is my Instagram. I am posting shit. You can go back and look at the old shit. It's awesome. Uh, look for All Out Show On Demand Serious.com forward slash On Demand All Out Show or Rude Jude that's, that's about all I can tell you Off the top of my head Coming up next News with Johnny The Chin Fuck boy Matthews You are checking out the All Out Show With Rude Jude On Demand And now It's time for News from the Chin with John Z. Matthews. There's this new challenge that the, the kids are What's into. that you're whispering? Say what now? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I feel like kids. 
The kids. The kids are into it. Say like you fucking mean it, man. You're opening the goddamn news. The kids are out there snorting condoms. It's a condom challenge, and they're putting it online. I mean, look, I'm full disclosure. We was doing whippets out of uh, we out of the big ass can, nitrous out of the big ass thing, and we ran out of fucking balloons. So I did one out of a condom because I'm a fiend, and that was a little. I felt that my friends thought that I was pretty gay, and I was like, "There's got to be a dick in there for it to be gay." Right now, it's just a plastic receptacle to hold my my nitrous oxide. But they did shut the party down shortly thereafter. Shout out to Paradigm and Hex Murder. This is a little different. Okay, I'm just saying. No, I, I, I I'm, before I start judging super harshly, I just want to say I have had a condom to my mouth. That being said, I've had a, every time I fuck, I put the condom to my mouth. Why? I spit in that shit. What? It, dude, it lubes it up. It makes it feel. It, it makes it slide a little bit, so it, it feels like I'm getting some friction. So wait a minute, on the inside you put- I will like, I'll spit in the fucking condom as lube so that my dick, will, the, the end of my dick will slide and it feels like I'm actually in some fucking pussy or else it just feels like my dick is getting choked out by a rubber. Isn't there a chance to slip out and you got a problem then? Or? There's been there's been some slip outs. Yeah, some slippage I'm sure. <laughs> you, especially if you're going in, if like you're really going in and then suddenly it feels like extra good, you're like, this could be a slip out. And then you do a, you stroke a little bit more just in just in you got to take full advantage. You're like it's too late. Yeah, you can't un- you can't unring this bell. <laughs> Let me just fucking stroke a little more before we before we fish hook it. You could, then you do the fucking bunny rabbit ears in and then pinch it out. I'm like a fucking gyno, bro. Wow, I'm good at that shit, son. But this this condom challenge. All right, show me. It has the kids. Uh, they are snorting the the condoms and then pulling it out through their throats, which seems I, hard to believe. It's possible. I, I've seen people do it with chains. Oh my god! All right, let's see. All right, here we go. Oh, he's... oh so brother. Yeah. Oh, hit pause. Oh, okay. Damn, man. I can't watch this. This is really. I, can't I watch mean. This. Congrats to black people. You guys have come a really long way from being one of the most homophobic races out there to now you are snorting fucking dick receptors up your up your nose. What the hell? I remember in 04 getting in fights over shit like this, and now, like, fucking the teenagers just doing it on purpose. They're filming themselves. Yeah, you're on You're on camera <laughs> like looking world. like fucking half a fag, <laughs> throwing a fucking condom up your goddamn nose. All right, oh. shoot, keep going. Let's see. Oh. All right, he's got the condom halfway up his nose. <coughs> Where'd it go? He couldn't get it in there? I don't know why that's making me want to throw up. Oh, what, is he Jamaican? That's even worse. They extra hate gays. For some reason, he's just making me throw up. They're making me throw up. My right nose. Let's see what happens. Oh, he's from Britain, bro. He don't count. Right, he's going up his nose. Uh, uh, he's snorting it. By the way, do not try this at home. Last time, if it doesn't work, I'm giving up. He is at home. <laughs> he's got it halfway up his nose, and now he's plugging this and snorting. Hit pause. I don't sound all the way gay here, but I think the amount of ketamine I've done, I would be really good at this shit. I'm just saying. Uh. Like I'm fucking I'm I'm fucking the snorting motherfucker. Like this guy clearly has not had a fucking drug problem. Like I I would out snort that motherfucker all goddamn day. Do you think you've hollowed out your, your nasal cavity a little bit? What? I've probably done t- permanent damage to everything inside of me. <laughs> Let's just be all the way real. All right, keep it going. Some other Let's fuck it. Here. Wait, he, I just want to see someone do it right. I, he, why are you showing me failures? Oh, he keeps... It's making me want to vomit. Yeah, my eyes are watering. I just and the guy's got no art on the walls. <laughs> Depressing-ass bedroom. He's got like a bottle of fucking, like an empty bottle of fucking wine in the background. What is this? 
Get it in you. Get it in you. There you go. And he pulled it out. And it's all drooly. Now he's happy. Alright. The white girl the white girl's gonna do it. She's doing it to metal. Yeah, there you go. Get it out. Get it in you. She's snoring it. It's halfway up her fucking nose. There you go. Get it. You got it. This is the dumbest shit. What happened to like just doing that shit where you fucking stab the you you, you take a knife and you stab in between your hands <laughs> like the metal kids used to do? You stab in between your fingers real fast. Whatever happened to that shit? That's a little more impressive. Yes, yeah, that's, that's that's like fucking tough guy, hard body challenge. Like metal kids would do it. You'd be like, damn, dude, you're metal as fuck, and they would have like Ozzy on their knuckles. But uh, you really could hurt yourself here. There's some danger involved. You can yeah. get stuck in your throat. Yep. Choke. Die. Put it in your in your lung. Darwin, bro. Fucking kill these motherfuckers. Yo, if someone died off of this shit, I would be so fucking happy. Ugh. We we got too many dumb motherfuckers running around here, man. The the median IQ is already a little low, so. This some jerk off kid fucking snorting a condom because it's cool, and he chokes. So, this has been around for a while. Supposedly, there's some videos uh, traced back to 2007, but for some reason, it's coming around again. Cause they, man, everyone's yo. Th this it just shows you how fucking how rich all these societies have become. Like we just running out of shit to do. Like they don't have they don't have. No one even works a part-time job no more. Like, this is what happens when you don't have a job. Like, this is what happens when you... This is what happens when teenagers aren't working part-time jobs. But you were wild as a kid. And yeah, but I was wild. Like, I was wild. I was working three jobs, selling weed, fucking hoes. Like, that was, that was my fucking wild. Like, I was working my ass off, g grinding on the side, selling, selling tree out of McDonald's. Like getting pussy in that bitch like that was my wild like i was fucking in mcdonald's that's 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 cool i busted nuts they're putting condoms in their nose i was like making money and busting nuts doing wild shit or busting out windows and taking people's shit or stuff like that i don't condone it but like it happened i'm way cooler than that that was that's it that's <laughs> And I was like a lame in my neighborhood compared to some of the other guys who are now in prison. But still, that shit, come on, man. I don't know. Fuck they doing? They're getting clicks, likes. Psh, man. What happened to just like being smart? Like, wouldn't that be cool just to be smart? Like, just like. Yeah, well, that'd be like well, that'd be awesome. Like if just like reading a book and finishing it get you some clicks. Like, hey, just f finish Moby Dick, and they got like a gang of likes off of that or something. Hey, I did some critical thinking, and then click, 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 click. Liked a bunch of shit. That'd be awesome. Nah, they got to fucking snort condoms and eat Tide Pods. Oh. I'm not even like, it's not even like old bitter. It's just like, man, what the fuck y'all doing, man? Kids will be kids. Grinder is in some trouble. Die. Grinder, they are now saying they will stop sharing HIV status uh, of the, the users um, Yo, first, with other companies. This shit, first, Cali. Cali did this shit. California made it where it was like you didn't have to share. It stopped being like a fucking felony to tell a motherfucker if you had AIDS or not. Like, if you knowingly... That's, it's one thing you don't know you got AIDS. You're like, damn, I'm getting skinny for no reason or some shit like that. Like, I, I, that's one thing. But, like, out here, you can knowingly fuck a motherfucker knowing that you got AIDS and not tell them. That's a fucking... That's like a law. 
Well, this is somewhat the, different, slightly different. Yeah, you can you can go on Grinder and not let motherfuckers you you know what Grinders for sure gay sex. It's for fucking fucking dudes in the asshole. <laughs> That's what it's for. Not romance. Fucking dudes in the asshole. Maybe go off, go over, jerk off with each other, whatever. Fucking like you know, some gay guys don't like. I got a gay homie that doesn't like butt fucking. He just likes to like lay on top of a naked guy and jerk off on him. Whatever, whatever floats your fucking boat. Um, I was asking him. I was like, why even be gay? Like, what's the fucking point? Like, what's the point of being gay? Like, just fucking jerking off on guys. Couldn't you just be straight and do that? Just wouldn't that be? E- well, I guess it'd be easier to be gay and do that. Like, it's easier to have gay sex and fucking. Th- no one says no. Like with guys, and no one's like, let's just wait. We <laughs> thought about that. They just it's like they're fucking down, bro. Yeah, if yeah, if you were gay, even you came on. Dress like shit. You you could go out into fucking some public park and blow somebody on the train. Give somebody the eye. Boom, it's on. Yeah, you could be yeah. They got they like I'm all, like I cut through there there's a neighborhood I cut through like and they got signs like past a certain past a certain time of night you're not allowed to drive down there because the gay cruising was so fucking heavy. So like you could you could you could you dress like shit easily looking like fucking Buddy Holly with AIDS could just just stand on the corner and suck a dick. Lots of dick. It's true. It's, yeah, it's, it's absolutely true. Is, so I don't know this whole idea of grinder making it where they're not telling the motherfucker if they got AIDS. Well, no, 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 no. See, the thing of it is, within that app, what they do is they give you the option to say, "Okay, this is my status. This is when I was tested." But what they were doing, they were then sharing that info with these uh, other app developers to test it. So they were giving out. So if you said, "Yes, I'm HIV positive," suddenly they release that data to these other third parties out there to do research on the app, which is not cool. All right, so they stop doing that, but it'll right. say, but it'll say, like, if I'm clicking through, it'll it'll have a big ass red X or some shit, so I know that you got AIDS. Somehow, I don't think it looks like that, but like I'm, a big ass fucking red skull and crossbones. I'm sure it's part of the profile. <laughs> going across my, going across the forehead, so I know that I might fuck around and get some AIDS off this motherfucker. What, would you have sex to lady if she said that she had AIDS? Fuck no, never. Nah. All right. Either one, I don't, AIDS, I don't care blown. if she got fucking half a hiv. I'm not fucking her ass. <laughs> I'll fuck a chick if she's bad and has gonorrhea because, like, you can take a pill for that and then you just don't fuck for seven days. But that's if it's not dripping or no shit. Like, it's unknown gonorrhea. How do you... <laughs> like, gonorrhea some gonorrhea. motherfuckers <laughs> got, like, walking chlamydia. Like, there's there's been a couple chicks where I fucked and got chlamydia and I was like, worth it. Worth it. Pussy was that good. She was bad. It was worth it. I, I was on, yo, I was on the bench for seven days. I had to chill that shit out because the clinic was like, this was back, this is when I was poor. And they was just like, yo, hey, hey, bro, you can't keep doing this. You're going to ruin your, you're going to ruin your urethra. Yeah. They said, you can get, you can get too much scar tissue in that shit. It's going to fuck you up. I was like, all right, chill. So, but did you heal back to to normal? Do you have a a normal urethra? I think so. Right. I, b- I bust strong nuts. <laughs> nice. Why did I just say nice? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> bust a strong nut, bro. Not cool, by the way, grinder. Yo, if if I don't know, I think that should, that having AIDS is pretty common in the gay community. Like they 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 were getting all mad about like I remember there was some fucking something happened where like they needed blood, and then this is when gay people raised the fucking stink about because like if you're a gay dude they don't want blood from you they're like we're we're good, and so I went and did research, and a quarter of the of I think like over twenty five look it up uh new AIDS fucking new people with new HIV. New HIV. You want me to look that up? People with new HIV is like about? gay men. Oh, okay. That's a fucking, a, that, that is a giant number. Because the, the, the amount of gay people is quite small. So, like, it's a disproportionate amount. And it kind of makes sense. Like, they don't, want, they don't want shit from me. The hookers. The hookers and the needle. 
you know, I you know, I used to shoot up ketamine with needles and shit. So like that was kind of frowned upon, even though I didn't share them or nothing. But like, they're like, "No, nah, we're good on you." All right. So this looks reliable. According to the CDC, gay men two percent of the population, but sixty seven percent of all new HIV cases. I mean, it like that's not being discriminatory. That is straight up using statistics to be like, "Hey, bro." We're good on your blood. You make up 2% of the population, yet 67% of the new AIDS cases are coming from you. That's kind of disproportionate. It's enough for me to be like, we're good on your blood. What about the hooker one, though? If Let's not waste time. If you don't have, if you don't, if you didn't test positive for it, you know, hooker sex a while ago. You're right. Hey, you're totally right. Like, I mean, now I'm, I haven't had sex with a hooker in fucking years, so... I'm and I'm AIDS free, so I'm sure I could go in there and get it. But even them, they, they don't want my fucking blood. They're like, now nah, we're good. And it sucks because you get you get free Lorna Doom cookies. It's mm, true. This is delicious. <laughs> I'm Lorna Dooms. Them shortbread jump offs. Fucking love them shits, man. Lorna Doom. Never heard of that. Man, you know Lorna Doom. <laughs> no, I don't. I honestly never heard that before. Lorna That's because all you eat is fucking sardines and crackers. And those uh, those bars we have here in the office. Is that where you're getting all your sustenance from? Last week or so. All right. Hey, I ain't mad. Haven't died yet. Steal that shit, bro. <laughs> it's not stealing. It's here for us. I know. Well, you'd never leave the office, so technically you're not leaving. <laughs> so well, I'm saying you can just take it on the bus with you, man. Have a couple. Yeah, tasty. Your girl don't feed you? She be sitting there eating. She said she gets takeout and doesn't order you shit and just eats it in front of you, doesn't she? My girl. No, it's a roommate. I'm not going to take her. Oh, oh, I forgot. forgot. Yeah, you're forgot. living with your roommate in the pit bull. Got that whole... Uh, the fucking yeah. man. Fucking pit bull. You hear him fucking? Uh, not yet. I hear a lot of uh, puppy uh, whining uh, at night. It's, it's it's quite a scene. I bet you your house stinks. It's There's there's urine. There's shit. There's vomit. Oh, buddy. Yeah. Dog comes in and runs all over me. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> but I wear a brave face and I love these people and they're great. But yeah, I had to get a fucking puppy right when I moved in. I get a fucking newspaper. I start hitting the shit out of that mother. Like, get the fuck off of me, man. That dog's going to get big. I know, bro. Yo, yo, if he's punking on you as a puppy, imagine what's going to happen when he gets full blown. The dog's biting me already. He's going to butt fuck you, son. I know. We're going to have to figure this You're out. You're going to wake up to a dick in your ass. Someone's going to have to lay down the law with this dog. You have to lay down the law with, with the know, fucking dog. I'm, I'm, a, I'm sort of a guest there. I'm not going to start disciplining the animal, but it's, it's, it's. I mean, it's, it's already has muscles on Bro, it. Bro, you got to be a, like, get off it's me. It's a beast. Don't you understand? Can we bring in a dog whisperer to teach this motherfucker <laughs> how to fucking say no to a fucking pit bull? John, you I'll can't be. John, I need, I, I need advice. Yeah, we'll bring someone in. They'll tell you what to say. You say it on the air. It'll be a good bit. Like, you can't. Listen, to, you're going to get raped by this dog. And it's, I mean, I, I can't remember the listen mix. To you. But, well, listen, I mean, it's kind of frightening. I said, this dog's going to get fucking huge, you guys. And look at huge. it. Huge. It, and it's already fucking you up. I know. As a child. I, it comes in when I'm sleeping, and it's just suddenly <laughs> on me. I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> what is going on? Uh, Yo, bro, it's it's a certain as dominance. Oh, I know. And you're just letting it. No, I mean I get up like get the hell out of here, beat it. But I'm I I, I should be more forceful and uh, and do something different because it's not working. Oh man, I don't know how to do shit like that. <laughs> but I'll be yo man, like if I woke up with a dog, I'd kick the fuck out of that. People be like, oh that's animal. Nah, bro, that dog's trying to <laughs> rape me, man. Like I'm fucking protecting myself. That's self defense, bro. I'm get the fuck. Firing on that motherfucker, bro. Like you can't let no. I don't know how to. I don't maybe like see through the dog whisperer. Be like, don't sock a pit bull. But like, if I wake up and there's a dog trying to fuck me or some shit, like, nah, this is not my world. I, I want none of it. And then, then it's it's biting my sneakers. It's just fucking terrible. You and you already fuck up your shoes as it is. You don't no, need the dog chewing on them bitches. John, you getting victimized, man? No, we're just we're just kind of like nah, uh, bro. And look at look, you like you like a battered wife. You coming up with excuses? I I will I will no go, no. I just I you I'll know I just book. I just got too loud with it and then <laughs> sort of research. I overcooked this steak. Yeah. I, I deserve to get fucking humped at night 
don't you shut your door? Yeah, I have, but it's sort of a jar to let some of the heat in. It's sort of cold in my room. <laughs> Get a heater. <laughs> I know. Yo, bro. <laughs> Yo, son. Yeah, it's not. It's really not good. It's fine. It's fine. You're leaving fine. your door open to get <laughs> raped by a puppy every night, bro. You fucked up, man. You deserve, man. You deserve this shit. Something's gonna change. Give me a different story. All right. So there's this diet that some are doing, and they're calling it uh, this snake diet. And the idea is that you you have a meal, but then you starve yourself for a couple of days, and so you're eating like a snake. So, um, yeah, I was gonna. They they say it's good it's good to fast. Yeah, but th- th- this is just trash. I don't know who's following this guy, Cole Robinson, the Never snake heard diet. Him. Yeah, me neither. But you got to see one of his videos. He's right, a let me see this guy. Maniac. But it occurred to me, I'm sort of living this life as it is. But... Look how skinny you are. Yeah, here we go. Uh, let's see. Hey, fatty! This is how to start the snake diet for dummies. What a dick! Please consult your local doctor before doing anything I say. Okay. But the reason you're here in the first place because your local doctor doesn't know how to create health worth a fuck. They only know how to take it and they get you fuck all for results. Let's begin. <laughs> so, step one to how you start the snake diet for dummies. Complete a 48-hour fast drinking snake juice. What is snake, snake juice? Snake juice. Don't you... Oh, it's it's just his his product. So oh, it has all right. So it's like, yeah, okay, his snake garbage. juice. All right. Fucking gum. Don't true. Don't take calorie-free sweeteners. Nothing. Fucking snake juice. This is my food addiction rehab process. We drive your body into fucking ketosis by fasting. All right. You're gonna have to buy some of these things called keto sticks. Keto sticks. These are to measure ketones in your urine. I have a YouTube video on these. Check I want to get out. some. I want to okay. see my ketones. Do not follow this man. I just want to see my ketones. And drive your body into ketosis. <laughs> And we need these keto sticks to see where we're at, okay? So you gotta buy these. You Someone want them to get show me some color ketones. by the end of the 48-hour fast. Okay. All right. Number two, eat low-carb meals. So your very first meal going into this, low-carb, low-fucking-carb. It makes it a lot easier. But after that, if we're fat, we're gonna be eating low-carb all the time. The best way to lose weight is to cut fucking carbohydrates. Oh, you get because the idea. One, it goes on like this, him shouting at you. And two, they make this dash He's water. Canadian, too, Three, right? Yeah. From Alberta. High. I've Come never seen guys. such an angry Canadian. <laughs> What's with all the cursing? I mean, who's he going to... I mean, I... He's doing this on purpose. This is a marketing technique. This is marketing, man. He's smart. Yeah. Hey, fatty. <laughs> da, da, da. Like, he's like, tough guy. I'm a tough Canadian. I, that's, I mean, that's his... Uh, that is his catchphrase. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> look, look at his Twitter. <laughs> With his... He's only got 466 followers. Yeah, but this, this is hey, insane, fatty right? is really big. <laughs> hey, fatty. Jackass. But by the way, you shouldn't do this. The, a doctor Why? here uh, says that it's... Uh, How to cure fat pig denial is one of his t- <laughs> tweets. <laughs> What's that? One of his tweets, April 1st. How to cure fat pig denial. He is going in. But it, it's not safe. Uh, the doctor would not recommend this to anyone for even a short-term trial as it's not based on any clear evidence, nor does it have any clinical evidence. That's he lost 28 pounds in 2.5 months. Yeah, it's all the meth or something. I did the same by just working my ass off and not eating, so there you go. I did the snake diet on accident. I didn't realize that shit. <laughs> it works. Look at me. I look like I got fucking AIDS. <laughs> hey. Is that that's the news? That's it. Hey, fatty. Let me just hear him yell a little oh, bit more. God. This fucking champ. <laughs> he looks like such a douche, too. He's wearing like a fucking muscle T-shirt when I'm smeeing. Hey, fatty! This is how to... Just calm down. Yeah. He wins hey, angry. Fatty! Just the angriest dude in Canada. I haven't seen anybody angrier than that guy. He wins. Hands down. Diet. All right, John. Would would can we? Would you be willing to book him and then tell and then you argue with him and tell him that he's full of shit? Sure. I mean, are, will he be here in the building? Yeah. Uh, I think he's gonna call right. up, but you can just. I would love to hear you argue with Snake Diet guy. I I I would I would definitely go into this guy. I, I I think he's stealing from people. All the snake oil shit or snake juice. His snake juice. Boo. 
<laughs> Book him, he's not busy. <laughs> Book him, he's not busy. <laughs> Done. That was the news. I can't wait for that. Hey, fatty. I believe you're lying, sir. You can't even stand up to a dog that's fucking you, bro. You're getting fucked by a puppy. This guy's gonna run. He's gonna run rough shot all over your ass. Oh, I, 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 I can't wait to hear that. Fatty. Yo, g- getting punked by a Canadian. Heesh. Hey, fatty. Yeah. This is how to. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is you literally are doing the snake diet every every week. I'm, so I'm, it I'm works. on the snake diet as we speak. It works. You skinny. I guess. That's. I don't know. I'm sure. That's the irony, bro. You don't eat. <laughs> don't you do what he's saying to do, and you're thin. And, <sighs> but you don't believe him. So go ahead. Fucking argue with that motherfucker. I can't wait. Mm. That's the news. You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. Shade 4 5th. That was the show. Thanks to Justin Hunt for coming in and talking all that heavy shit with us. Um, Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, Chris on the boards. Alex is a producer. John does the news and produces. And Danica was on the phones. Keenan was in the back doing shit. You can follow Justin Hunt, the company man, on everything. Arrah. We out this bitch.